If you have been managing firewalls for at least a year, chances are you've run into a situation, especially in smaller to medium sized organizations, where you've been asked to either traffic shave or limit or quality of service, either users or specific applications and destinations. And that's exactly what this video is gonna discuss. So let's dive right in and let's see the basics on a FortiGate. All right, guys, so here's the scenario for this particular video. We work for a small organization that only has a 20 meg internet connection. Uh, they have found that their internet is becoming slow at times, and after looking at the Forda Analyzer, they have noticed that there is a great deal of um, web traffic going to YouTube during the times that, that the slowness is being experienced. So they're looking to their firewall engineer to use traffic shaping to not block YouTube because they don't want to completely block it. It's considered a morale booster for their organization. So instead they wish to just slow it down and make sure it doesn't consume too much bandwidth. And for the sake of this video, they wish to limit YouTube usage to five megabits at any given time. Now, when you're doing traffic shaping on a FortiGate, there's a few things you need to remember. One, there's multiple types of shapers. There's a shared shaper, and then there is a per IP shaper. A shared shaper means any, any group of IPs that hit the particular policy that does the shaping, they all fall into that category. They share that pot, if you will. On a per IP shaper, if you have a five meg limit on YouTube, that's per IP that hits that policy. So 192.168.1.2 and 1.3 each get five meg. It's not five meg combined that they have to split. So just remember that when you dive in, right? The next thing you have to look at is not only do you have shared shapers and per IP shapers, but you have regular shapers and reverse shapers. Now you don't actually have to edit anything on the reverse shaping, that's just how it's applied to the policy. So for instance, in our situation, we want to limit YouTube usage to five megabits max, right? And we want to give it a lower priority. So how would we go about doing that? Well, we would configure our shaper, set it to low, tell it to have a um, max bandwidth of five megabits or 5,000 kilobits per second, and then we're actually going to go in and create our traffic shaper. So the traffic shaping has to be done in a very specific way for it to work the way we intended. Traffic shaper policy applies to traffic shaper based on the direction the policy is pointing. So if you're going from LAN to WAN, that means traffic going in that direction is what's going to be shaped, which means we need to apply a reverse shaper to that same policy to prevent the downloads from taking up too much space as well. So we're gonna jump into our Forda Wi-Fi now, apply the policy set, and be able to explain this as we go. We're looking cleanly at our firewall, right? Take note that in order to do traffic control or traffic shaping or anything of that nature, whether it's uh, traffic policing, traffic shaping, queuing or anything, you have to have policy. If you're gonna do it based on application, for starters, you have to have an uh, an actual policy that is viewing the application data. If you don't have a policy that's using application, and that's not the policy that users are hitting to go out to said resources, the shaper's not gonna do you a whole lot of good. So, we have our firewall policy here. You would be surprised at how many environments I run into that have a single policy for outbound traffic just like this. Don't do this. Break it out based on source and destination so you have a good security posture. N needless to say, this is how most environments are done. So we have our policy here that says, you know, do our base level application control. Now we're going to dive into our traffic shapers here. So we have to actually create the shaper that we want to use to limit YouTube to five megabits. And as I mentioned, there is shared shapers and there are per IP shapers. We're going to do a shared shaper. We want the group to be limited to five megabits total, not five megabits each. And we're gonna call this YouTube Shaper 5 Meg. I like to keep my names relatively straightforward so I know exactly what they're being related to. 
this traffic priority, we're going to make it low. We do not care about this traffic as far as, oh no, they can't get to YouTube right now, or it's not getting QoS in the proper manner. We want it to be low priority. We want our voice and our office and things like that to work well. And we want it to have a maximum bandwidth of 5,000 kilobits per second. And that's all we need to do here. Name our shaper, give it a low priority, and then give it the appropriate maximum bandwidth that we wish to do, which we have a 20 meg pipe in this situation and we're limiting to 25% of that throughput. I'm going to click OK. Now, our next step is to actually build the policy that's going to apply that shaper to it. So we go down the traffic shaping policy, and as you can see by default, you have the one that assigns from any interface, it applies a shaper of medium, and everything's the same priority. That's how it is out of the box. So create new, we're going to name this one YouTube. We want to limit YouTube to all users going to all destinations. Obviously, you can't keep up with YouTube as far as what content delivery networks they are. Google spins up too many on a daily basis to actually keep that accurate. So we do all sources to all destinations. Our executives aren't using YouTube. They're hardly ever in the office. They're too busy, you know, business dealing and things like that. So all sources to all destinations is who we want to apply this to. And we want to do all services because you never know if, a, if an application is actually going to use the normal protocol services that you expect or if they might use something that the developer moved it to, right? And then our application. We wish to apply this to YouTube. Now, as you can see here, I've created an application group titled YouTube that has all these guys in it. And we'll just select that and click close. Uh, take note, if you don't have any level of deep packet inspection enabled, the various pieces of YouTube if you only wanted the block uploading or only specific downloading or certain things like that, you need deep packet inspection to actually see those functions within the website. Otherwise, it'll just see it as YouTube in general. So we're, we're doing it for YouTube as a whole though, so I just created that group for that. Now we need to actually apply our shaper. Our action is to apply the shaper, and it's if the outgoing interface is outside. Now for our shared shaper, that's the one where you know everybody's limited to five meg total, not each. Now, as I mentioned, a shared shaper goes in the direction of your traffic shaping policy. And as you can see here, we're going from any interface to the outside interface, which means it'll traffic shape uploads and things like that as it stands now. We need to now apply a reverse shaper to get the traffic that's coming in off of that policy as well. And that right there, those two options set on this particular policy will limit your, your YouTube usage to five megs total across the entire organization. And you click OK and you see it there. So traffic shaping isn't overly complicated on a FortiGate. You can get very granular with it. In fact, you can even use it based on web filter categories and things like that. Uh, you can do more specific policy set. Our policy was all, all. You can knock it down to where all users except for executives get this applied to, especially if you're using Fortinet single sign-on or something along those lines to help to give you more level, to give you a higher level of control based on the policy and who you wish to apply it to. So hopefully this provides you with what you need to get started with traffic shaping. If you have any questions specific to it, please don't hesitate to comment below. I love reading them, I love responding to them, and they help make the content that I provide here better. Um, as always, if you like the video, please do me a favor and hit the like button, and then subscribe and hit that notify bell so you'll know when more content comes out. We shoot for a video a day, and our goal is to provide not only the how, but the why to networking as a whole, configuring your Fortinet hardware as a whole so that when you run into a situation where you actually have to troubleshoot, you're not just a parrot that was able to copy and paste some commands, but you actually understand why it behaves that way as well.